almond marble today, guys. The actual artist, Michael, has, has chosen. Was this from a customer? Of course it was. It's just that thing you guys wanted to see. You just didn't know it. How are you guys this day going? Good afternoon to you, by the way. Today should be a good pour. I like doing simple stuff, and this should be very easy for you guys to do. I, I believe the simpler, the longer it, the longer it stays like timeless beauty. Like really. Good afternoon, Jason. It's good to see you, man. I just had quite the day, a good day. I accomplished a little less than I was hoping for. I was hoping to be doing an ocean floor and have half my prep done today, but. Aside from that, bent feather, bent feather, how are you doing? Oh, that's my thing. Bent feather is my gr new grandma. That's badass. Jeff Peterson, God bless you, man. Good to see you, dude. Hope you're having a good day. Hey, today it's really funny. I'm walking outside, um, looking on the side of my building, and. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of annoyed at my trash can because the people, I have a big roll-off dumpster and the people that dump it, they always leave it more and more and more out in the road. So I'm going to have to go like move it with my own truck probably. Yeah, but it's like a 40-foot dumpster, a pretty big one. And so I'm looking at it and I'm like, dang it, I keep telling them to put it closer to my building. And I'm, while I'm looking at it, I realize, oh, there's a part of my forklift sitting on the ground. And just a little cap, not a big deal. But I'm like, I wonder how that got there. And I can see something got stuck there in the dirt. And I'm like, just looking around and I see burnout marks, like black, black, black burnout marks, all four wheels, like something was in four wheel drive burning out like 20 feet away over on the concrete. And I'm like, something got stuck out here. And I kind of thought maybe my forklift, but I was like, I never drove my forklift over here. You know, have I gotten stuck in the forklift? Yes, because I do stupid shit, but, um, but th I knew this time wasn't me and nobody drives my forklift but me. So, um, I walked inside and I see somebody that I didn't recognize pull up in a truck on Sunday that must have had my gate code and um, they get stuck. Um, they, they try to dump a pallet with my forklift that they borrowed, um, got stuck in it, tried to tow it out, borrowed all my straps, borrowed straps off of somebody else's trailer that's parked on the property that rent space at our secure trailer storage. And I, I'm getting like, I was getting really annoyed about it and thinking, man, who would do all this stuff without even just calling and telling me that they're borrowing my forklift and doing all these things? And then I recognized who it was and I know exactly who it is. And I've talked to the guy like three or four times this week and he hasn't told me he did that. And he parked my stuff back and put it all back like nothing ever happened. So I'm trying to think of the wisest way to deal with that, but I sort of, I don't think I should just come right out and say anything to him about it. I think I should mess with him. So, what do you guys think? I mean, what's done is done, and nothing got like permanently damaged or anything. But the moral of it, I think, leaves me to want to do something to mess with Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. Do you get a new question what type of material are you This is epoxy. This is countertop epoxy. Just Levi telling stupid stories while he tries to do some epoxy. Welcome, welcome. We pour this over, and I'm not sure if I have a, oh yeah, I do have a raw one, I'll show you in a minute. It's the white PVC ceiling panels. So this is actually just a ceiling tile for fun. Just a really light, easy to work with piece. Um, it's also made out of PVC, so obviously it's totally impervious to moisture, and I kind of like that for a PC. Never, when you have MDF and you're throwing them in the back of a truck and you know, as samples and whatnot, and they're at the car wash or it's humid out, you get warpage and what not in this here. You should never have anything like that. I'm trying to keep it really simple here, guys. I'm just using a brush here. Oh, we right at dawn. Right at dawn, bitches. Shay. Shay. What should I do, Shay? Shay, you got it. I can think of a really good guy that guy. I have my own ways, but I mess with people. So I used to have a buddy in the Marine Corps. His wife was real bitchy. She was like, she freaking hated me. She hated herself, I'm pretty sure. One of those people, just, 
just a hateful lady. And, but of course, then there's people like me, and I'm just an asshole. I, like, I think I'm playing around and playing pranks, but now I look back and realize the things I did, and they weren't always like the nicest, but she got really mad at me. Um, I came in Tim's shower one time, and Tim, my buddy, um, we, we were really close in the Marine Corps. Where we went to Iraq together and everything. And I remember one time I come over to say hi to him, and she was like, he's in the shower, and he's in there shaving. So I see he has soap in his eyes. I went in there and yanked the shower curtain back. He didn't even realize I'd yanked it back. I'm like, what are you doing, bud? And yeah, dudes are in the Marine Corps like this. We do weird shit. And I realize he doesn't know that I'm there. So I just super quiet. I'm getting soaking wet. I just climb all the way into the shower with the dude just to scare the shit out of him. And I get like one inch from his face. And of course, he opens his eyes and gets the soap out of his eyes after like 10 seconds and we're both soaked. And he opens his eyes and realizes I'm there and he falls and it, I thought it was like a good time. That lady got so pissed off, she never, never forgave me for that. So to try to ease the mood, um, I knew she was going to town one day and you know, I think, well, maybe I'll just kind of prank her. And she was pregnant, like eight months, eight and a half months pregnant. And I went and made a full life mannequin and hung it from their um, like chandelier in their kitchen. So it looked like a person hanging there. And when she came in the door, she saw that and like tipped over and got super mad. It didn't help our friendship like I thought it would. I can't talk about the other stuff, how I messed with those people, both of them, but those are the only somewhat PG stories. I don't know, should I have not done the gold? Was the gold a bad idea? And should we have more of the charcoal? What do you think, Michael? I don't want any more gold. But I do think we need a little more of a predominant line of charcoal. Um, do you like say a woman renovating a school bus? A woman renovating a school bus? What a badass. Hey, check out her profile, anybody. Are you doing let us know if you're having people follow along with you on TikTok too? Come out here to a class with us, schoolie. That's how you know it's going to actually turn out nice. It's a woman doing it. Some dude would just be seeing how fast he could do it. Yeah, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, I mess. I used to mess with that guy so bad. That Tim. Yeah, he probably does have PTSD after Iraq, but all just strictly from things I did to him. That's it, dude. Good job, Kim. You are. That's what they say about you. I hope someday they say that about me, because that is, I think that's, as you get older, you start realizing that usually you don't need to get that mad about stuff. I've been thinking about, like, the forklift. I was kind of mad at first when I just didn't know who did it, and the more I thought about it, I thought, the poor guy was probably really stressed. Yeah, yeah I, saw Mike, I saw Michael smoking his favorite weed out on the loading dock. His favorite kind of weed is cocaine. No, I'm kidding, but who is that? Who is that um, comedian that always says that? Who's a really funny, like, you know, the guy that goes on Joe Rogan, him and Joe Rogan are friends. He's like, my favorite kind of weed. Oh, the mullet guy? Yeah, yeah, the mullet, dude. Oh, I want my little boy to get a mullet so bad. And he, my, he is just not having it. All the little girls at the school love him. So maybe he's doing what's right. And of course, I just don't have hair, so why the hell should I pick my son's hair? We're trying to get to your comments, guys. Thanks. You know what? Oh, dude, I have a, a really good friend of mine, like a really good friend. Um, when we were like 19, I was a little older. I think he was 17 and I was 19. And we both had pretty hard lives. We, we grew up with oh, Vaughn. not a lot of, oh, Vaughn. Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn, yeah, that was a dude. We both grew up, me and my very good friend, we both grew up with very minimal parenting and and um, input from parents. So anyways, I bought a brand new car. It wasn't a brand new car, but it was brand new to me. And I'd had it for like three days. And he goes, hey, I want to go see my sister. My sister had a baby. So I drive out to Nebraska with him. So we drove for like 20 hours out and 20 hours back, whatever, on this trip. And on the way back, we hit a rock in the Eisenhower Tunnel. And that kind of thrashed the, the exhaust a little bit, but not too terrible. And we were OK. So I was, I was fine. I was driving when it happened, too. Um, it was nighttime. Um, and then the next night, I'm driving him to drop him back off at school. And I'm sleeping, he's driving. And all of a sudden, the car just swerves off the road. 
going like 90 miles an hour. We have a pretty major rollover accident. I still have like problems with my back from it. And, um, and he tells me like, I don't, it knocked me out. Like I, I had dirt in my ear. It broke my seatbelt broke. It ripped the engine off. All four, all four wheels were gone off the car. The, the back of the back seat was gone. So it was a really major, like, I think we rolled like five to seven times. And um, kind of funny, he tells me, hey, Levi, like, I wake up barely. I can't walk, can't stand up. And he's telling me, um, Levi, he's like, I'm really sorry, but he's like, a deer ran across the road. And I'm like, dude, it's good. Like, it's better that we, it's better that we swerved off the road. You know, we are alive. God, you know, I would rather hit a deer than swerve. But what's done is done. And, um, and I was like, don't ever feel bad about it, you know. So about four or five years later, we're like, sitting there and he goes hey you know that time i swerved off the road in your brand new car and i said oh yeah yeah and i was like you missed a deer and he goes well he goes it was a lot smaller than a deer it was more like a rabbit and i was like what and i was like kind of laughing i was like oh it's no big deal dude don't feel bad about it and he's like man i'm just sorry i felt bad i didn't want to tell you about two years after that we're hanging out one day and he goes hey remember how i told you that that was a rabbit that i hit or that i um swerve from while we were um, driving down the road in your new car back when we were kids and then now it's like 12 years after the fact and I'm like yeah I remember that and he goes I just fell asleep and swerved off the road so, <laughs> so st to this day I, I don't give a shit like we're both okay he's a really successful like awesome dude with a family and like we both are alive I thought it was pretty funny that he couldn't tell me it makes me more think of me I was probably like an asshole or something or he could have told me so Makes me think I should probably be more approachable. Maybe that's why this other dude, I won't drop names or tell anybody, but his name's Rodrigo Obrecki. It was cool, him and his wife were a cute little team, like she helped him. She even backed the trailer up. She did all the man stuff while they were unsticking my forklift out back. Maybe I should post the whole video. I have it on like five different cameras. You should. Granite countertops work really well to epoxy over because um, granite's a really porous natural stone. And I know this might not have been the direction we were thinking of at first, guys, but it's the direction you guys got. Sorry for the stupid, boring story over there, guys. And I only take like four years to tell a two minute story. I need to. I always see like really good storytellers online, like Joe Rogan and just the people he has, and I'm like, how the hell did you learn how to? I just tell I tell the whole joke and get to the end, and then I realize I forgot the punchline. Or I like the trans. It's a rabbit turrets. <laughs> you guys are rough. I hope I never mess up at your place. You know what, I, on the other side of me, like, who out there has gotten grace? It's so funny how we all get grace, and, and then we hope that we, can, we try to judge other people based on only results, but I don't know. I've been, I've been convicted lately to try to be a little better of a person about different things, not get excited. I think having kids, I don't ever want to get mad at my kids too quick. Jason, what's the deal with you and rabbits? <laughs> me and rabbits? I didn't say rabbits. I wasn't the one with the rabbit idea, Shay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dang, I guess I do have, maybe I have something with rabbits, Shay. I shouldn't even. I can't tell you online what my thing with rabbits are. Ooh. Okay, have I just totally boned it and it's past redemption, or is this? Now I'm just going for a real piece of marble. If I can. A real piece of purple marble. Who wants to watch us do an ocean floor this week? Trust the process. Ah, oh, trust this process. I just got crap in my not not literal crap. Leave it to leave that to leave a chunk of some kind of debris in there. It's not gonna be a problem, huh? It's gonna be a happy little accident. Exam time's over again today. We're still gonna burn this damn thing. Gotta light it on fire.
I think right now I'm down on push-ups and I owe several push-ups, several sets of push-ups, but I did actually do quite a few this last weekend. I was, but as you tell, my titties are sagging. I need to hit them again. Don't zoom in on that. I wasn't trying to make it. <laughs> he does that weird thing. Like he zoomed in on my tits last week. The audience went crazy. Panties started hitting the stick. No, not really. That's how we make our money. I better start doing my push-ups so I don't so we don't go broke up here at Diamond Coat. My jokes definitely aren't gonna pay the bills. That would that would be fun. I think every every good young man that I trust has wanted to be at least a comedian once in their life. Get paid for the shit that used to get kicked out of school. For things that you used to get in trouble for. Make a Make a living out of it. Do the eulogy at all your teachers' funerals that told you you'd never amount to shit. It is sad. I went to one. I actually liked the dude, but he told me I was going to be a loser. And him and his wife have both died now. Sad. And they both died like unemployed, unemployed teachers that told me that I didn't. Since I didn't want to take my ACTs, I'd never amount to anything. Same, Jason. I got kicked out. I was homeschooled till seventh grade, and then I finally got put in a little private school, and they weren't ready for me, so they kicked me out 37 times in the next, like three and a half, almost four years. I literally think they didn't want to actually get rid of me because back then, back in the day, I'm like 64 years old, and no, but. It, I'm 40 something, but at least back when I was a kid, they could like act, punish you and make you work. So whenever I got in trouble, they'd be like, oh, guess who's mowing the lawn for another month at the school and five acres of grass. And so I shoveled all the snow. I did that for like three and a half years. It was good for my character. I'm glad for every bit of punishment I ever got. I deserve most of it. I will say when I finally got kicked out, I did not agree with that. Was I disagreed with them hard on that because I actually was just standing up for a little kid. Am I wrecking it, guys? I don't know. I think I'm having too much fun with the sprays, but I think I have to like call it quits eventually, right? I wanted some. I wanted true contrast on this one. Who thinks I should just roll the whole thing? Now, I know I often play with a little bit of flame and spraying, but in real life, you really should be very careful. Make sure all your alcohol is evaporated and that you never light it on fire because you'd never want to actually have an issue in your, in your home. Good, Jason. That's isn't that. Aren't you glad for all those blessings now? I sure am. Yeah, I got sent out to an all-boys farm school, and I was so glad for it. Worked on the farm, drove tractors all day. They found out I could drive a backhoe. I grew up little driving equipment in the woods. I drove a log skidder a lot and did stuff like that. So even at that school, I caused a lot of trouble, but I was good at everything. So they kind of really didn't. They never gave me problems. So. I did get in some trouble there, but that is, I don't know, I don't mind it. Can you guys, what do you guys think? I should criticize the hell out of it. Or I should just roll the whole thing. Do they think I should roll it? Sorry. This is, now I really will stop touching it. This is one of my favorite colors though. Thank you guys. Sharon, you're a badass. I like Sharon. There we are. I think I'm going to leave it, guys. Now, though, on to the fun part of class. Or, this isn't class. You guys are just here for fun. Now you need to share our live with a friend. How do they share it with them? How do they share the live with a friend? Like, call them up. Yo! You gotta check this dude out. He's doing the stupidest shit we've ever seen. 
somehow people watch. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to sand and polish. If you notice, there's two different machines on this. This was sanded and polished back up to, a, I believe we ran this up to like 1,000 or maybe even 1,500 or 2,000. Um, but the epoxy was still soft. It was only about 12 hours old. Um, so I was showing how to um, polish fresh epoxy. This here has cured a little bit longer than that. Um, but we're going to try to do the same thing. I'm going to show you degloss and polish today. So how to take the shine off of something and how to put the shine on something. Dude, that's a good problem for your son to have, isn't it? That's awesome, Shay. Usually God has real plans for us, way beyond what we have for ourselves. You know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to separate this. so they, Do you want me to do that? Like tape it off so they can see or the difference? Then people join and can see sanded and unsanded, possibly. Guys, I'm stuck in my shoe. Do you need me for anything? Yeah. More than one. Um, yeah, I haven't talked to the people next door. Yeah. Yeah, Brad. Yeah, Brad at the other side of our address. Brad Hayden. Sorry, guys. Okay. A lot of you guys probably think this is wrecking it. You're actually going to love it. And I don't know if anybody's even on here watching. Call your moms. They're going to be sad if they found out they missed me. Okay, now we're going to polish this. And I'll show you guys how to polish epoxy. And it's going to be beautiful. It'll be so much prettier than it was just as is. Now, definitely when you're sanding and polishing, you want to do all of your like cutting and profiling first. Um, so like with your coarsest grit, and this is pretty coarse. I'm cutting this with 320 grit and for epoxy, Epoxy is shame, like poured, it's about 7,000. So I just cut it down to 320, much, much more coarse. We want to wipe it off in between because we don't want any of the little sanding particles stuck on here, leaving swirl marks if we go back up to a shine. Um, the other thing is, like I was saying, is I use a real stiff backing pad here, but when you're on your coarsest grid, it's really important that you cut all your highs and really profile that actual um, epoxy because even though this is really flat where it's poured, sanded and polished epoxy is going to be that next level of just absolute perfection. This is going to turn really pretty. Thanks for all the love, guys. Thanks for being lovely, everybody. I'll try to be lovely for you here today. So, 800 grit. That was 320. Now we're going up to 800 grit. Okay, here we are. 800. So that was 320. Now 800. Now you can kind of slow down, put not not heavy pressure, but enough pressure just to keep it from bouncing around on you. I'm at a pretty high speed, but I'm letting the tool cut. And um, 800 grit sandpaper feels really smooth. I mean, it's, real, it's a very smooth paper, um, but it is still taking off quite a bit of material because there's so many little teeth on there biting. So you guys are gonna dig the heck out of this piece. This is gonna be beautiful. These are Michael's colors. Everybody give Michael a shout out. He's the dude that makes so much of this happen. And 
I don't even know if you're gonna hear me. I probably sound like an old lady with a vibrator over here. Okay, that's gonna be super sweet. All right. Now, that's 800. That's so freaking smooth to touch. So, if you guys actually touch that, that is like, you can't. But you guys could go to class here, sign up for the class. We also have an all-Spanish class coming here. So, um, September 27th, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three days, 27, 28, and 29. And it'll be all in Spanish. Um, and that'll be Spanish and English, but it'll be taught primarily in Spanish. And I'll be there also for the English side. And then we'll have three days of English class with me. So, or that'll be... I'll be first, and then he'll, so you'll be able to come to my class, and then I'll just be his helper, because our dude doing the Spanish class is a certified gangster from Mexico that's really cool, and he's going to do some really, really decorative stuff with you guys. One happy ending? This is a happy ending, trust me, trust me, trust me. Grand Junction, Colorado, that's the western side of the state. And you guys do all this, like every class, we teach them how to pour the epoxy. We teach you about sanding, honing, even fabricating new countertops, walls, floors, um, vapor, all kinds of it. We teach you, we teach you more than you can probably learn. And a bunch of you guys come here and teach me stuff too, so I love it. Now, this is 1500, so we did 320. Uh, we did 320. 800, now 1,500, and if you feel this, this is getting extremely, extremely smooth. Anybody out there ever see Righteous Gemstones? Apparently, they didn't like to hear me. I wouldn't either want to hear me. Remember, this is your guys' live, though, so if you have any questions about what I'm doing, I'm going to bring this back up to a polish, and it's going to be much shinier than that, but it's going to have a totally different cut geo depth to it that you can't get any other way. So if you're wanting to do a really high-end table or countertop, it doesn't matter how fancy you think you are, this is going to be fancier. thousand grit. Remember we want to wipe that other that old dust off each time. Just now that you're on the finer particles it's a little less damaging, but you definitely don't want those coarser particles swirling around on there, leaving your swirl marks when we get up to a really good shine. workshop it's links in the bio and um, if once you go to the website just go to our workshops. Is that in our um, just our shop. I think you can go to the, just the shop where I think there's a workshops tab as well. And I believe the Spanish workshop is the top advertised thing on the, the page I believe in. Let us know. Give us a follow and thank you guys so much for following along. Thanks for all the love today. Now this is 2000. So this is going to start actually leaving a little bit of a burnishing effect on it. But it's really fun. All of a sudden we're going to go to foam back pads and then this thing just, it just comes to life and you see all the beauty. That's probably one of the more addicting processes for me is to really polish a piece out. It's just really fun when you get it right. It, it'll give it a better look than a cut rock or anything. And that's a lot of the ones we know we're going to sand and polish like this. We'll actually cut them a little bit more and we'll spray way heavier colors because we know we're going to cut some of those colors back off. But it won't be a big deal. It's all just for the look. So, oh yeah, that's going to... This is going to be a very, very nice piece. And I hope you got some shout outs, Michael. But yeah, Michael picked the colors in this one. He's the one that does most of the really awesome videos on our page. And he's really built a lot of what the TikTok audience has seen. So even usually when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, it's because he told me to. That was 2,000. Now we're, now we're gonna go to three. Hook and loop. I haven't bought these. How, which what? What products do you use and what do you recommend? 
we are, I'm the owner of Countertop Epoxy and Diamond Coat Epoxy. So I definitely believe in my products, but I also believe in them because we have the best freaking team here who has created the best epoxy in the world. So if you get like our countertop epoxy, if you notice, nobody compares anything to it because it's a shit and nobody would want to make their stuff look shitty. Hence why they don't compare with us ever. Um, we don't, even, we never really, we have such amazing customers or something, but we rarely, I hardly ever even see people talk shit or ever badmouth anything about us. So our flooring epoxy, like our outdoor flex, our diamond gloss, all of it, it's top shelf product. If it was at a liquor store, it'd be exactly what you'd want. If it was what your dad's bringing home, it'd be what your mom wanted. If if your mom ever gets epoxy from your dad and it's like stone coat or something, she's going to be let down and she'll know. She'll be like, I wanted Levi's stuff. So just remember that. Um, I do do it, but not nearly. I, I do it quite a bit differently than this, and we can do it much more efficiently. But I think we have a video we're going to be having come out where I actually do sand the floor. So now if I can, this is 3,000. So this should be the beginning of an actual somewhat of a shine. That already is one of the smoothest pieces I have ever touched. It's amazing. Oh yeah, this will this will burnish like very beautiful. That Jason, that's awesome. And this, today, Jason, this will be my first time. I've actually sanded. I've polished up to like six and seven thousand, but usually that's with an ultra fine Meguiar's paste. And today I'm actually going to try sanding up to seven thousand. So oh man, that is Today I have my new seven thousand. I know, me neither. I've, I've never. I've always just had to run a polishing paste, and today I thought I'd wow the sweet people out there. It's your lucky day. You get to see me do something for my first time ever, which usually is a major um, series of mistakes, but. I'm going to try to make sure this isn't a mistake, so I'm going to grab 5,000 foam-backed pad, and then I'm going to go to 7,000 and see just how shiny we can make this piece, and I think it'll be beautiful. Say what? This is foam back, so it's squishier, 5,000. This should really start shining, this piece, where you start seeing it actually turn out probably different, but better than what's next to it. And I think it's important that you take your time on this and really understand that this is polishing. It's not... It's not an immediate process that you just need to pass over it. You need to sometimes, kind of almost like you're massaging it in or something, taking your time. Watch that sheen, overlap each stroke. Keep the sander moving, just firm, steady pressure.
Wow, that is a beautiful, absolutely flat. And now for my 7,000. Now, I, I've never gone to seven. I usually use a paste. So if this is a major bonehead move, I'll just run and grab my buffer. It's sitting right here, and I'll buff this out, and it'll look sweet anyway. Then you get to see me in an apron. Oh, that's shining, though. That's nice. This is actually a ceiling tile for ceilings too so but yeah we've traveled whole ceilings my two offices ago i had a boardroom and i had a huge tray ceiling in there and i did the entire ceiling we have an old video up of me doing it and the video makes it look like um like it actually went well it was like so nearly a disaster because i did it all down on sheets and then installed it and thank god for girl power because i had like several guys in the office but they just weren't cutting it so i was like we need customer support and like all the girls from customer care came and helped and that's the only way we got it up and i remember dude one of the girls um much smarter than me said hey are you sure we're gonna be able to do this um just a couple of you guys and i was like ah yeah we got it i was like don't worry about it and i was like have a good day and then right after that i was like hey can you come help me remember that thing you asked me well, i was totally wrong Yeah, and this is actually only, I think this is like 14 hours old. That's why it's like not quite shining as easy as, as it even will. So this will even shine better. I can definitely polish this even better as soon as it hardens for like a full 24 hours. Oh, that is just beautiful though. You can see just the absolute perfect flatness, so. Well, there you go. And that's how you get the wall epoxy smooth or any of the other ones for that matter. So. Oh no, very, very little. I mean, that's, um, I can actually figure that out per square foot um, foot for you. You're, we run about 15 square feet per gallon, so um, and it's about 10 pounds per gallon on average with a little bit of waste. So you're probably about three quarters of a pound, like a couple ounces per square foot. So it's still very very light. So that's thank you guys so much for tuning in. Appreciate your guys' support, all the love, um, all the follows, and. Um, definitely we'll be watching out for your Q and A's. Um, message us if you want to see something different. And are you doing the titty zooming thing again? No. I thought he was zooming on my tits again. It's the camera, she's trying to make me look taller. I tower over you people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna hire a midget just so I look like him. Sorry. Um, so yeah, God bless you guys. I'm sorry it's not my killer pedophile shirt. I will do, I'll finish my laundry and fold my damn clothes and show back up with good shirts. So God bless you guys and I'll see you all tomorrow. And we'll be doing the ocean floor too, so. It'll be a fun one.